Welcome to this video on epistaxis. Before we begin, consider the following questions. Why is the nose a common site of bleeding? From where do nosebleeds typically originate? How would you assess a patient with epistaxis? And how can epistaxis be treated? One of the principal functions of the nose is to warm and humidify inspired air. And in order to achieve this, the nose requires an extensive blood supply with a rich network of vessels running just beneath the surface of the nasal lining. As such, this lining is vulnerable to damage with resultant bleeding. There are seven reasons why the nose might bleed. Firstly, mechanical trauma, such as through nose picking, forceful nose blowing or direct injury can cause the small blood vessels in the nasal lining to break, leading to bleeding. Secondly, seasonal effects and associated dry air can affect the health of the nasal mucosa. In colder months, the air holds less humidity and indoor heating dries the nasal passages even further. This can cause the mucosa to thin and crack, making it more prone to bleeding. At the same time, the nose increases blood flow to warm the incoming air, which raises the risk of vessels rupturing. Hypertension and fragile blood vessels are another cause. High blood pressure can place excessive strain on these vessels, making them more likely to burst. Finally, hormonal changes in adolescence can make the nasal mucosa more vascular, leading to a higher risk of nosebleeds, particularly in teenagers. The majority of nosebleeds come from the anterior septum, specifically an area called Kisselbach's plexus, or Little's area. This is a network of vessels supplied by several arteries, including the anterior and posterior ethmoidal arteries, the sphenopalatine artery, the greater palatine artery, and the superior labial artery. As it's in an exposed location, it is highly susceptible to trauma and environmental factors. Bleeding from this area is typically unilateral, self-limiting and responsive to simple first aid measures, such as pinching the soft part of the nose, known as the Hippocratic method. More severe cases may arise from a posterior source, known as Woodruff's plexus, which is supplied by the sphenopalatine and posterior septal arteries. Posterior bleeds tend to be more significant, often causing blood to flow from both nostrils due to posterior spillover into the nasopharynx. These bleeds frequently require medical intervention, including nasal packing. When assessing a patient with epistaxis, it's important to establish the onset duration and progression of bleeding, an estimate of blood loss per episode, whether the bleeding is unilateral or bilateral, whether there's a precipitating event such as nasal trauma or surgery, and any risk factors including high blood pressure, bleeding disorders, or medication use, particularly anticoagulants or intranasal recreational drugs. For anterior self-limiting bleeds, treatment focuses on patient education, correct first aid techniques, and optimizing the nasal mucosal health. This may include using a septin cream to maintain mucosal integrity and adjusting the home environment to reduce dryness. If bleeding is recurrent and conservative measures are ineffective, chemical cautery can be performed to seal the bleeding vessels. Silver nitrate sticks are commonly used for cautery. When silver nitrate is applied to the mucosa, the moisture present facilitates the dissociation of the silver and nitrate ions. The silver ions then bind to cellular proteins in the mucosa and vessel walls, causing these proteins to precipitate. This leads to a coagulative necrosis, a process in which the cellular architecture is initially preserved, but the affected tissue ultimately forms a protective eschar, which not only seals the bleeding vessels, but also provides a scaffold for epithelial regeneration, allowing the mucosa to heal over time. Crucially, the septum should never be cauterized on both sides simultaneously, as this can compromise the underlying cartilage and result in a septal perforation. To avoid this, at least six to eight weeks should be allowed between cauterization of each side. Following cautery, naseptin cream is prescribed for two weeks to promote healthy healing of the nasal mucosa. For active, high volume bleeds, nasal packing is often required. Packing works by applying direct pressure to the bleeding vessels reducing blood flow and facilitating clot formation. Different types of nasal packing materials are available, including merosol packs, which are expansive polyvinyl ethanol sponges that absorb moisture and expand to fill the nasal cavity. Inflatable packs, such as the Rapid Rhino, are air inflated to apply adjustable pressure. 
Foley catheters and ribbon gauze packing can be used in severe cases, with the catheter occluding the posterior coeni, while the gauze provides anterior packing. These packs invariably traumatize the nasal mucosa when being placed or removed. And so, in cases where nasal mucosa fragility is a concern, such as with HHT, traditional packing should be avoided due to the risk of further trauma. Alternative hemostatic agents such as topical human thrombin, such as Flowseal, or absorbable packing materials such as Nasopore are preferable. In cases where bleeding cannot be controlled through packing alone, surgical intervention may be necessary, and the most common procedure is the sphenopalatine artery ligation, in which the artery is identified at its entry into the nasal cavity and divided as proximally as possible. Any branching vessels are also ligated to prevent recurrent bleeding. In approximately 15% of cases, the sphenopalatine artery supplies the contralateral nasal cavity, necessitating bilateral ligation. For patients with significant comorbidities who are unsuitable for surgery, embolization may be considered. This is performed in collaboration with interventional radiology, where the feeding vessels are occluded to arrest the bleeding. I hope you found this video to be useful. I'd be grateful for your feedback in the comment section below and let us know what you'd like us to cover next.